One of the questions I'm normally asked is, what's the difference in VirtualBox between the different network connection types? And so Jason had actually asked me to do a slight video on this one so that we could kind of go into detail about which network appliance you should actually utilize if you're trying to go through uh, VirtualBox for your network settings. The first one we're gonna talk about is actually NAT, Network Address Translation. This provides the virtual machine internet access while pro simultaneously providing a private IP address for the actual machine. This provides a little bit of network isolation between the actual virtual box versus the uh, machine in question, meaning that your host operating system and your virtual box operating system, have they can't move files back and forth, nor can they discover each other communications from devices on your external network, and you're trying to access things from your inside the network, it's not gonna let you do it. Because of that isolation, we're semi sandbox with this means that NAT is perfect if you're just trying to run a Kali box competition, or maybe you're trying to do something else with it. It can provide you sort of that, infer, in, that interface in between your virtual box and the environment you're trying to utilize without putting your, because if I've got my host operating system, it's still providing the internet access. So be careful with this one. This really only provides a segmentation between the host and the virtual box. It doesn't really provide any isolation other than that. So if you're online with this and your Windows machine, your Windows machine, your Mac, or even your Kali Lin or your Linux box, excuse me, really aren't separated. They're just separated between the host environment. And that's a lot different than being hosted, uh, separated on the, on the uh, internet environment. So be aware of that one. The next one I wanna discuss, the next one is internal network. Uh, with internal network, it literally isolates the system from everything else. So in this case, we have a true sandbox environment which doesn't have access to the internet. It's internal communication only. Now internal network allows me to create a system where really the sandboxed environment can be utilized for testing, can be used for uh, looking at a specific network. Maybe I wanna create uh, an environment where nothing can communicate with anything outside of it. This is great if I need a secure environment to do any type of simulation. Maybe I wanna hide some data in there. Uh, to utilize, maybe I just want to put a Word doc in there. Again, this is the problem comes into play with no external access, meaning you don't have internet to it. The great news is you don't have internet to it. So in this type of environment, we can customize the network to any way that we want. We can use whatever IP addresses we want within this environment because it's truly sandbox. Uh, we might use this for a small network of interconnected servers without exposing them to the external network. Again, they don't have internet access, so it's not like you can go through them and do a lot of things. But maybe I wanted to bring up a server online for the first time, configure it, go through the products, make sure the web pages are set up, do all that keys, or it's trying to, to ping out to uh, another environment. This is really a great environment for that type of configuration setting. Uh, and typically we see this for testing and for simulations more than anything else. Uh, I would use this environment if I was trying to do maybe some uh, VulnHub Maybe I was trying to do some hack the box and I was concerned that maybe the system uh, could go online or maybe I was concerned that uh, I don't want the system to go online for whatever reason. I do almost all of my uh, testing on host only environment, which is slightly different. Now host only is almost identical to internal network. However, there is one key difference here. Within a host only adapter or host only network, my VM can actually communicate with my host computer, my host operating system. Now they don't have internet access and they have to be configured properly, but if I wanted my core operating system to be able to communicate with my internal VMs, uh, I could utilize a host only adapter. Now this is different again from an internal adapter where there's that clear delimitation between the internal network, i.e. the VMs, and it has no access to those resources of the host operating system. So if I was testing something like malware, an internal network would probably be better. However, if I'm doing a VM or maybe I'm doing some testing or something like that, maybe a host only adapter would be better. I use host only if I'm doing uh, uh, some type of hack the box or if I'm trying to get access to a, a vulnerable machine, then host only adapter serves better for my purposes because then I can communicate back and forth between the virtual environment and my host, which is my Windows operating system. So a little bit of a difference there, but not a lot. The VMs still do not have access to the internet but your host does. And so there is that demo animation between them. Otherwise, internal network and host only are exactly the same. And again, you have to configure your host networks. And again, you have to set up your host only network 
properly in order for it to configure or to communicate outside of that host only environment or that VM only environment. It doesn't come pre-prepared like that. So you have to do a little bit of configuration with it, but then you're allowed to actually utilize your host operating system to communicate back and forth. Next, we have a generic driver. Now, generic driver isn't used very often. I've never seen it in use by anyone, but it could have its place, right? So generic driver allows us to create and manage a custom configuration that isn't always available within a standard NAT, bridge, or host-only environment. I can do some real flexibility in here by offering my, uh, by configuring my environment, such as my IP addresses, my subnet mask, my DHCP settings, all my routing rules within a VirtualBox environment. So if I really wanna go in and mess around with settings at a layer that I probably can't do in another environment, then a generic driver would allow me to do that. Uh, again, I don't see this a lot of times, but it could simulate complex network architectures for testing purposes. We could test network protocols in this environment. We could implement specific network requirements for our virtual machines. Uh, all of this could be done from a generic driver, but again, not something I normally would use, but if you're big into IT and you're really trying to learn IT and maybe set up an environment that plays more in the real world scenario, I might use a generic driver to pull that off. The next one I wanna talk about is actually NAT networking. And you'll see a little bit of a difference between NAT and NAT networking in its capabilities. Where NAT is a basic networking mode and allows our systems within our VirtualBox environment to have its own LAN, uh, that's pretty much all I could do. And so I have one LAN of my virtual machines and then it communicates through my host to get online and it provides network address translation in order to do that. However, NAT network takes it a step further. If I do a home lab and I've got multiple LANs, then I would need to do NAT network because each one of those NAT networks have its own DHCP and technically has its own router and it can create multiple virtual LANs within that environment. This provides me a more advanced structure than just NAT by itself. Now, oftentimes I tell students, especially in college, if we're setting up networks, to choose NAT network over NAT. And they often ask why. Well, the reason is because is more often than not, we're gonna create multiple local area networks within our systems, which means I've got multiple systems going on simultaneously. You'll notice that if you ever do PFSense, you wanna do NAT network, not NAT, because NAT is only one LAN. That's all it has the capability of doing with its own DHCP, and that's it. But with NAT network, I can create multiple networks using multiple LANs within that same environment. And then I could utilize NAT networking to have them cross-functionalize or cross-communicate between them using the proper network protocols. NAT network is a little bit more advanced uh, and it provides me a scenario where multiple VMs can communicate with each other over an external network through NAT, but without exposing them directly to the external network, just like NAT does. We often use this for testing environments or creating virtual network segments within larger network setups. That means that if I have a larger network setup and I have multiple LANs, then I would wanna use NAT network. The last one is cloud network, and this one's more of an experimental. I'll be honest with you, I don't have a lot of experience with this one, and I don't really have a lot of knowledge in this one. I can't see a good reason why I would wanna use a cloud environment unless I'm actually trying to create an application or a server that's going to mimic a cloud environment. I wanna be able to test it between those access points. That's the only time I can see a cloud network being used. You'll even notice that it says experimental in there, which means that they're still working on it. It's been experimental for probably the last three years. I don't know if they'll ever get around to it. And again, I don't have a lot of experience with it, so I'm probably not the best person to ask when it comes to something like this. Uh, I do wanna take a moment to actually go through and provide a little bit of functionality within VirtualBox since we're talking about all these network connections. Within any of my boxes, I can go through and change the network adapter simply by checking the box, going to settings, and then going to network. Now we have this one set up as NAT currently, but if I went down to NAT network, or more precisely, if I went to host only, either one of these adapters have a pull down menu next to name. Now from name right now, they've only got one option on both of them. If I wanted an additional option, because let's say that I want two local area networks associated with my NAT, then I would need to add it. Or the first time you're setting up NAT network, it may be a blank and you may be like, I wanna do NAT network, why isn't it there? Well, let's fix that now. I'm gonna press okay. I'm gonna to go to file, tools, and then network manager. Within this network manager, you can see that I've got host only networks, NAT networks, and cloud networks. We're gonna concentrate on host only and NAT only. Now I've got my VirtualBox host only ethernet adapter. I've got my IP address, my range, 
And then if you look at the DHCP server, I've got a range there as well. If I wanted to add another one, I'm just gonna press on the little box right here that says create. And within that, it's gonna give me that little point. It's gonna start up creating this other adapter for me with a host only environment. And here we can see virtual host only ethernet adapter number two. It's currently disabled for DHCP and it provided me a new IP range at 192.168.71.1. If I wanted to change this, I could. Let's say that instead of 71, I want 96.1. I can do that. I can leave that the same, but I still need to provide my DHCP server. This address right here, this adapter, is setting up the router, the edge network that's going to provide us with all the information that's going to connect every other machine to it. For DHCP, I can go in there and I can enable the server. You notice the server address is dot two. It's still providing me that subnet mask it's providing me that address bound and the top and then the bottom. I do want to point out that because I changed the adapter to .96.1, the DHCP server is only still at .71. So I need to go through and change all of these that are currently 71 over to 96 so that they'll communicate. Otherwise, the DHCP server would come in and try to define items and it would never work properly. Once I hit apply, it'll ask me again, I'll click in, and you can see now that my IPv4 prefix for the network 2 is 192.168.96.1 on a slash 24 CIDR, and I can see that I have DHCP enabled. That's fine, and I can go through the process. Now, here's the interesting point. I can change this to anything that I want. It's not going to matter. Uh, in a host-only environment, I can literally change it to anything. I can make it look like Google or Cloudflare. I can make it look like a DNS if I wanted to. Whatever I want to do, it will do for me. And I can limit my server mask based on what I want to provide. So for instance, it's at 255, 255, 255. If I make that a dot um, 128, it's going to cut the addresses, right? So I need to be aware of that. Now, NAT network is almost exactly the same. You can see here that I got my IPv4 prefix. I got an IPv6 prefix. And I can see that DHCP is enabled. If I click create on there, it's gonna provide me NAT network one, which is what I often have students do when we're going through PFSense. Through this, we can see we're on 10.0.2.0, the same exact IP address that we saw in NAT network one and zero. They're the same thing. So I would wanna change this to some form or function. So I'm just gonna do 10.0.10.0. And then if I go port forwarding, I can add port forwarding. Again, by adding that little box right there, and I can provide a rule in order to do port forwarding between my different uh, networks. This is a great way that if I wanna go through different aspects of my uh, net network and create those LANs and really get into some advanced networking, I can do that within the virtual box environment. Now I'm gonna delete both of these because I really don't want them right now. Uh, so I can just right click and hit remove. It's gonna remove it. I can go over my host only one and I can again, I can hit remove and remove. It's gonna ask me if I want to, I'm gonna say yes. All right, so that's it. That is our network connections. Jason, I hope this was helpful. We will see you again next time. You guys take it easy.